Good morning all, it's post bag. And first out of its envelope is this one. Wow, these are really tiny. They're little RGB LEDs with a built-in driver chip. So these things are called WS2812B and this is a little five millimeter square, well chip essentially, but you can see through the window there that there's not only a chip, but also three LEDs, a red, a green, and a blue. And uh, it's a four pin chip. It's mounted onto a little printed circuit board. There's a capacitor there, which presumably is just across the five volts for decoupling. So this is the item on eBay. Uh, this is described as 10 pieces RGB LED WS2812B addressable NeoPixel DC 5 volts Arduino, £3.90, uh, free delivery, and this was from a UK seller, Transnova. Now, a search for NeoPixel takes you to Adafruit, and uh, Adafruit have a whole range of NeoPixel products, uh, LED strips on reels, rings of LEDs, matrices, uh, little short strips, all these various different things that they sell and it soon becomes apparent that there's quite a different range of these individual LED types. So here's the WS2812B, this is a 5050 chip which means it's uh, five millimeters square and in the description it says this is the newer B revision of the WS2812 LED chips with four pins not six. Uh, it's co-compatible and the same overall shape and functionality, uh, but not the same pinout, so you cannot use these to replace an S chip. What's a WS2812S? So the WS2812S is also a 50-50 chip uh, with integrated driver, but you can see from the picture here that it has six pins. I think it's time to start looking at the data sheets. So WS2812B, you can see that it's a four pin device. This is a world semi chip. Let's look at what the pins do. VDD, data out, VSS, data in, nice and simple. WS2812S, although the data sheet just says WS2812, uh, is a slightly older version. You can see there that it's six pins. And what are the pinouts? Well, one is not connected, that's pin four. We have VCC, VDD, VSS, D out and D in. So we've got two power pins here. VCC, power supply for the control circuit, and VDD, power supply for the LED. Now, perhaps rather confusingly, there's also a WS2811. Uh, what's this? This is just a chip. It's an eight pin chip. It's got outputs for red, green and blue. And if we scroll down to the application circuit, you have to attach LEDs, uh, a separate RGB LED to the output of this chip. Now, whereas the 2812 is five volt only, this chip looks like it can be either five volts or with more LEDs, it can be driven by 12 volts. And then there's yet another one, which is the WS2801, which is, oh, what's that? A 14 pin chip, and the application circuit is there. And the reason I've gone through all these data sheets is because if you do a search on eBay for something like Pixel LED RGB, you just get a bewildering array of different stuff um, from pre made up LED strips to the little chips on circuit boards. There's even a WS2803 18 channel uh, chip there. More strips. Um, also these chip numbers seem to be fairly interchangeable on some of the listings and uh, it just is very confusing. These little bundles of pre-wired uh, LEDs that says it's a WS2801 or a WS2811. Well which is it? We don't really know. Um, individual chips, uh, all these strips, and then these sort of pre-made up boards. Uh, these ones actually have four LEDs on each board module. Quite a, a bewildering array of stuff for sale. 
What about these? These look a bit cheaper. These have got uh, four pin LEDs soldered to the edge of these boards. Those boards obviously have the 14 pin chip on them. So I thought I'd uh, go for the simplest option, which is the latest chip, the WS2812B. Four pins, uh, five volt only. The five volts for the controller and the LED are one and the same. But then when you start going through the data sheet, you realize that driving this thing is gonna be quite complicated. So it says here in the data sheet, the data transfer protocol use single NZR communication mode. An NZR is non-zero return. So I head to the Wikipedia article on non-return to zero communication, but this isn't quite the same. So back to the data sheet. Well, now this is clearly, clearly serial data. Uh, a zero code, the top item. It has a short high, a long low. To send a one, you have a long high and a short low. And then there's a reset code. If you go low for long enough, it's classed as a reset, not a ret, as it's marked here. And here's the table of values for those uh, high and low periods. They're basically 0.4 microseconds, 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.85 and 0 0.45, so it's, it's sort of 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. Uh, that one at the bottom, the uh, reset, if you go low for more than 50 microseconds, then that's uh, the end of a transmission and it latches all the data in and actions it. But look at the um, tolerances on these timings, plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. Now, because of these very short durations for high and low, less than a microsecond, there's a real problem here driving this with Arduino because you can't use delay, obviously that's milliseconds. You can't even use delay microseconds because it's less than one. Now, fortunately, Adafruit have a library uh, to drive these NeoPixels or these addressable RGB LEDs. And here's the code here. And I'm just going to go into that CPP file for a moment because what's in there is actually quite interesting. So we've got the usual blocks of C code, but then you get to this stuff. And this is assembly language. In fact, it's inline assembler. And this bit banging, as they call it, of the uh, digital outputs has to be done in assembler because it has to be done extremely quickly. Now some of these timing sections are quite interesting. You've got a, a no-op instruction there, and they call it in the comments no-op. Then you've got these relative jumps of, of zero distance. In fact, it doesn't jump anywhere. But the reason they use them is because a relative jump in uh, 80 mega 328 assembly language takes two clock cycles. So it actually behaves as two no-ops. It's a way of writing no-op twice without actually using two bytes of program code. Anyway, the fact is that this Adafruit NeoPixel library exists, um, so it should be a relatively simple thing to uh, drive these individual RGB LEDs. And so the next one is this. And uh, that envelope contains this little lot. So we've got little mini breadboards here and uh, these little tactile switches and 50 opto isolators. So the breadboards and the switches and the opto isolators, of course, are to extend my uh, opto isolator logic experiment. To see if I can build, uh, well, the sort of crude begin beginnings of a computer using this opto isolator logic. I'll come back to that stuff in another video. But the other thing in this envelope is this board. Now this is um, an ESP8266 uh, sort of test board module for experimenting with these Wi-Fi transceivers, these Wi-Fi transceivers and uh, microcontrollers. Now I have to say that I don't really know what this is, not fully. There's a USB socket here, and that goes into a CH340 uh, USB to serial. So we're serial beyond that chip. There's a 3.3 volt regulator there to power this module. Now, interestingly here, it also says that it takes an NRF 24L01+, which is the uh, 2.4 gig uh, data transceiver. So it's kind of dual role, this thing, 
from what it looks like. Um, there's a relay here, a 5 volt relay. There's a little um, uh, LDR light dependent resistor. There's a place on the board for a DS18B20. I think that's that one wire uh, digital temperature sensor. There are buttons here with LEDs above them for GPIO 14, 12, 13, 15, GPIO 2 and GPIO 0. There's a buzzer here. Uh, lots of sort of male headers, dip switches, and so on and so forth. There's even an antenna converter, but I think all this is, is it's um, two sockets connected to each other. Oh, and there's a little toggle switch up here as well, and a 5 volt, 2.1 uh, millimeter input. Now, a power block is supplied, but uh, there is some question mark over whether these power blocks are any good. This one's two pin. US stroke Chinese, so I probably won't use it anyway. And also supplied was this uh, USB mini cable. Now I did see on another eBay listing from another seller, um, different versions of this interface module. This one is clearly designed to take the ESP, I think this is an ESP01 module. Let me just check that. So yes, yeah, so a search for ESP01 uh, gives this one uh, as the result in the images section. Uh, ESP02 is this kind of square one, also got eight pins, but it's got the antenna connector on the board. And uh, ESP03 is this one with an onboard antenna, but with more uh, of the GPIO pins broken out into uh, external connectors. So this board is supplied with this interface module um, to take the ESP01, but underneath this module, there's an ST microcontroller. Now, what does that do? So is this board intended to be used with some sort of um, IDE, Integrated Development Environment? Does this ST microcontroller have firmware already in it? And if so, what does it do? So as with all things ESP8266, there is a bit of mystery surrounding this. Uh, it would be quite nice to know what that says, I suppose. So here it is on eBay. This is the ESP8266 Serial Wi-Fi Module Test Board plus Module Coexistence Module, and then a load of letters at the end. Um, $15.94, £10.61, free shipping. Now this came from Alice110, 1983. In fact, it was very kindly provided to me by Alice110, 1983 for review. Not quite sure how long it's going to take me to review this because, well, I don't know how it works yet. So I just plugged it into my PC and the PC made a sound to say I've recognised the uh, USB to serial chip there. Let's switch it on. Okay, so it uh, beeped and uh, some LEDs have come on. Um, and now there's a button down here, ESP reset. So let's see what happens. Okay, on the module, the blue light briefly flickers. So it looks like that uh, is a button to reset the ESP8266. Now I've just run up cool term. Uh, I'm on COM5 9608 none one it says there if i press return nothing happens the lights light up so it's transmitting my returns but i'm not getting anything back now the board comes supplied with these two switches here on which say dcr on and dct on there are also two other switches which say esp t on and esp r on so i thought i'd just switch to those and see if it makes any difference. So the DC uh, receive and transmit are now off. The ESP transmit and receive are on. That uh, shows it better aligned. And that has made a difference. If I press return, I'm at least getting something back now. Let's try AT, AT. Okay. So it is now talking to me. So it appears that by pressing those switches, I can now talk to this thing using the standard AT commands. Now I've just done an AT plus RST to reset the unit and it's come back with the uh, AIThinker.com URL and the version number. 
Uh, this is the version that runs at 9600 board. And there on the test board is the AI Thinker logo. Um, so it's certainly intriguing. This is uh, would appear to be from the people involved in the firmware, not expressive, expressive as such, but certainly uh, AI Thinker. It's very intriguing. So not much is said in the uh, eBay listing description. It just says ESP8266 full I.O. lead supports AT model development, model development and API SDK. So I'm just wondering whether the SDK is in that ST microcontroller. Uh, yes, API SDK on board STC15L24EA CPU. Use this board without any downloader. Hmm. Now I've just plugged in my um, my ESP8266, which is the one that I slightly modified. I attached this LED and the battery box to run the Node MCU firmware. And uh, on my cool term, I've got the Node MCU prompt. In fact, I press return and I've got the uh, thing back. Node MCU. 095 build whatever that is powered by Lua 514 and now I can enter Lua commands I've just typed a let's make it equal to six yeah so it's uh, it's running the Lua interpreter so even if it takes me a while to fathom out how to use the uh, ST microcontroller the bit underneath the board there um, I can at least use this um, in the short term for talking to these modules either with the Node MCU firmware in them or with the original Espressive firmware um, where you talk to it using AT commands. So it's quite a convenient board. It does the 3.3 volts and the CH340 uh, USB to serial. And so this little collection of items is today's post bag. It's going to keep me amused for days this is. <laughs>